Hey guys, welcome back. I hope everything went okay while you were building your car. Uh, if things didn't quite go the way you planned, that's totally fine. Once you actually start building, you might notice that things don't always go the way you plan them out to be. Tinkering is all about figuring out the solutions to all those little problems along the way as you put everything together. You're doing great as long as you just keep on trying. Now we've made it to the last video in the series, the test video. You've seen me doing little tests along the way, making sure that my wheels keep spinning when I attach bits together, or making sure that things don't fall apart where I've glued them. Now it's time to test the whole thing all together. This is what we call a prototype. It's not quite a finished product, but if we test it out and make some changes, then it could very well be. There are a couple of different things that we're going to test for. The very first stage in our test is to see if it works at all the way we expected it to. So I'm going to wind up my wheels, stretch out this rubber band, I'm just going to put it down on my bench top, and now let's see what this can do. Hmm. I'm just going to make sure we test again to see if that happens every time. Okay. Let's see what this can do. Okay, I might actually need to see if this works the same way on a different surface. This surface is really smooth. Let's try somewhere else. All right, I'm gonna do the same test, but this time I'm gonna do it on this rough surface here. This is just a carpet that I've got at home. So let's wind it up again, stretch out our rubber band. I'm gonna rest it down here. And now, let's see what this can do. It went a bit further, but not nearly as far as I was expecting. We might need to make a couple of changes. I think what might be the case here is that either my car is not heavy enough, and so the wheels are bouncing off the ground, or maybe there's not enough grip on my wheels, and so they're not able to hold onto the ground and push off when our rubber band pulls the wheels. So if my wheels aren't gripping onto the ground enough, I may need to add something on there to make them a little bit more grippy. Uh, I need to increase the amount of friction, the rubbing between my wheels and the ground. So I think I might actually just try using another rubber band. I know that these are really good at gripping onto things, so maybe if I just put one around the rim of the wheel here. It's a little bit too long, so I'm just going to twist it over and put it back up the other side like this. That might help out. Okay, let's do it to the other side as well. Now, I think I only need to do this to the back wheels. So now that I've made this small change, I'm gonna give it another test again. Get another rubber band, hook it around my axle. Let's twist it up and let's see. Oh, that's going much better. Let's go test it back out again. I wind it up, I put it down, and on a count of three, two, one. That went really well, but if I want to be able to tell how good my improvements are from here on out, I'm going to need some way of measuring this. Now, I could get out a tape measure or something like that, but I think an easier way would be just to mark out some areas down here on the ground. So I'm just going to use a little bit of tape and a ruler, and I'll be able to count really easily to see how far my car goes. What are some other things that we could change about that car that might improve its performance on our test track. I want you to pause the video and give it a moment, list all of the things that you might be able to change on the car that you've built. There are a couple things that come to my mind straight off the bat. We could change how much our car weighs. Maybe adding some weight or taking some away might change its performance. We could also change what shape our wheels are or what size they are or what they're made of. Or we might be able to change the rubber bands on there. 
We could use bigger or smaller ones or maybe link several of them together. This track is really good for testing how far something can go, but sometimes you might want to measure how fast it can go. One way that you can do that is if you get somebody else to build a car as well, you guys can set a finish line and see whose car makes it there first. Let's see what the rest of the team came up with. Hi, I'm Laura and this is my car. I have used the same powering mechanism as Jordan uh, with this attachment on my chassis and also this one on my axle. I've also used the same kind of sleeve as Jordan made out of some paper straws, but my materials are pretty different. I use grapefruit wheels and I found they're pretty high maintenance. They lose their structure the more you use them. And also because they're not flat around the rim, the car gets quite wobbly. Um, I also only used one front wheel and I put a piece of straw inside the wheel to help it spin easier. I have really enjoyed experimenting with how far backwards and forwards the wheel goes um, and how that affects the car. And I've also used a range of different elastic bands and tested those out too. Hi, I'm Evan. For my rubber band car, I wanted it to go as far as I could make it. So I did a number of things to help with that. I made it as light as possible. It's mostly made out of balsa wood and cardboard. Um, I gave it really, really big wheels to maximize the uh, movement it would get from the elastic band. And I tried to tie together six different rubber bands to make it go really far. Uh, it didn't work, so I just used one. Um, it went about three meters, which I was pretty happy with. And if I wanted to improve it, I would probably add more grip to the wheels because I noticed they slipped quite a lot. Anyway, time for the test video. Let's see what this thing can do. Right, that brings us to the very end of our testing video and the end of the series. I can't wait to see what you end up building.